Hey everyone, I have been wanting to add a budget planner to my hybrid happy planner bullet journal system for a while now. So a few days ago, I purchased the happy planner budget planner insert inserts and then I realized that I could make some additional inserts using my dot grid bullet journal paper in order to make it really work better for me. So if you haven't seen how I set up my Happy Planner bullet journal hybrid system, I'll link that video for you down in the description below. And today's focus is just going to be on the components of my budget planner and the additions that I've made to the Mambi Happy Planner budget planner inserts. The first section is I decided to make it for the entire year. So I have my first insert is long-term financial goals. So I have three months, six months, one year, and five years. And the idea, each of these boxes represent a certain monetary value. They're not all to scale, but I'll add a scale bar later on. The idea is that I will be coloring in these boxes once I have saved up that amount of money and then obviously once these boxes are all filled up that means that I have enough to purchase that item and it's kind of like a vision board for savings to keep me on track and to realize how much how much further I have to go the next page is my financial decision maker so what I've decided is that every time that I have a major financial decision that I need to make, I'm going to make one of these sheets for my planner and I will write down the pros on the left and the cons on the right. So for example, this one is the pros and cons of being able, if um, we were to make a home investment within the next year. So for example, it would be potentially high reward, but then the con is that it's high risk because um, of the monetary value and locking financial capabilities for several years. So then at the end, I added up each of the pros and each of the cons and I totaled it at the bottom to kind of help me get a better understanding of whether or not this is a good financial decision to make. Also, I wanted to add that if you want this dot grid, it will, it's in, um, included as a free printable with my Happy Planner bullet journal hybrid video. So I'll link that, like I said, I'm linking that video down below. So if you want this free printable, then check that video out. The next page came with the budget planner inserts. And these are your savings goals for your, for your entire year. So up here they have an area where you can write in the savings goals for each month. And then for me what I've decided to do is to outline this as I am reaching my goals of savings and then I put these little dollar stickers in here with a different color for each month to kind of make it more fun for me. The next page is the month at a glance. So one of the things that I'm not super happy about these inserts is that some of the pages are kind of out of order. For example, I would have preferred if savings goals was kept up at front, at the front, and then this month at a glance was listed under the section for April, but it's kind of out of order, but that's okay. Um, in the future, I'll probably just make my own version of this budget planner and I'll update you guys with how that turns out, but that won't be for a while until I use up this planner. So on the month at a glance section, they have an area for your main income, extra income, and total income. And then you break it down based upon the category, like housing, your rent, your phone bill, electricity, gas, cable, and internet, 
your transportation, how much you're spending on gas each month, how much you want to spend on insurance and food and children or taxes, personal care, entertainment, loans, savings and investments, and miscellaneous. So I've broken down all of my projected costs for my budget for April and we'll see um, and I'll try to meet that goal and then at the end of the month we'll write down the actual cost and the difference. Each section comes with this calendar so what I'm going to do is just write down the dates of things that are related to finances and then I'll end up transferring it over to my actual planner that I use for tracking my um, events and appointments and meetings and things. So I'm not really sure how necessary this calendar is because I don't know if I like the idea of having two separate calendars. I typically like to keep my schedule all in the same place. So when I do redo this budget planner, I'm probably not going to include a calendar. But for now, I'm using this left side to write down my financial to-dos for this month. And then I also have a section for net worth. And I think when I redo my budget planner, I'll have a page for quarterly check-ins for net worth to just make sure that everything is um, where it needs to be. So I also decided to start having financial check-in meetings with my husband every single month. And so I've scheduled it for April 10th for this coming month. And what we do in that is we go over our budget for the following month. We see how we did in the previous month. We will, if it's a quarterly check-in, we'll go over our net worth. If we need to make a major financial decision, then we'll use the pros and cons sheet that I showed you to decide on that financial decision. And also, we'll go over um, our bills, making sure that we paid all of them, and an update on expenses. The next page is are the bill pay um, checklists. So the idea for this was to have your bill pay checklist for each month. However, I'm not really a big fan of that because I don't want to have to write out all of my bills every single month because that's just kind of like taking extra time to write it out. So I think after this month I'm going to transfer all these to my first tab which is really for my yearly um, items. Um, right now I have to keep it under April because the calendar page is on the same page as the first bill pay checklist, which is kind of bugging me, but that's okay. So as you see, I have the months written out for each of the bills that I need to pay. And then I write down the amounts, and then once it's paid, I check it off. And I also have the date that each of the bills are due. So if you, another thing you could use this calendar for is to write down when each of the bills are due, or you could just write that down in your regular planner. The next page is the expense tracker which is also under each month. So, for example, here on April 1st, we spent $23.98 on movie tickets for Beauty and the Beast, used a credit card, and this was a want versus a need. So at the end of the month, this is something that we will need to go over if we're spending too much on wants versus needs. 
and also which categories it's fitting into. And it helps um, with the budget tracker at the end of the month easily transferring this information over into the budget and totaling everything up. So then after this we have the budget review for that month. So at the end of April at our financial meeting check-in we're going to go over where did we have the most trouble, what can we improve this month, and what goals can we set for next month. So when we're making the goals we're going to make sure that the goals that we set are actionable goals. Instead of saying, oh, we're gonna save more money in the entertainment category, we'll say something like, we will only go to the movies once next month. Something that is easily monitored so that we can check in easily the following month. Each of the months look the same and have the same sheets. But then at the end, we have these stickers. So there's little motivational sayings. We have stickers that say paid and then the different months so that you can label your tabs, which I use these to label my tabs, and also label your calendar months. And then there's some more motivational sayings you can track your paydays, there's little piggy banks and dollar bills. You can write when bills are due. And then we have a section for receipts. So my idea, this is, this was just a blank unlabeled folder that came with the kit and I included these stickers on here for it to say receipts. So my idea is that once we bring home the receipts, we can put it in this little folder and then I can quickly write down at the end of that day or whenever I get the next chance, I'll write down how much we spent here on the expense tracker. And then at the end of the month, my idea is to put it into these envelopes. So this is just, this is um, an envelope that I already had and I just hole punched it using my portable punch that you've seen me use in other videos. So at the end of the month, my idea is to then put all of the receipts into an envelope for that month and then and I'll only be keeping like two or three months in here at a time because I don't want it to get too bulky. And then I can just transfer it into my hanging file system in my um, office cabinet. But these are easily, they're at hand if they're in this planner and I can easily reference them to see exactly what we were spending when we're going over the budget. So I hope this video gave you some ideas for ways you can set up your own budget planner in your Happy Planner using either just the inserts from the Happy Planner budget planner or you can easily recreate all of these in a bullet journal Happy Planner combo system. You can make all of these on either your computer or you can use the dot grid printable that I provided and just draw out your own budget and expense trackers yourself and include them in your planner to save money if you, if you choose to do so. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see more planner ideas, please check out my Instagram at personalize my planner and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye.